Anyway, at the end of the level there's the Rat King boss and... Wait, where is he? The screen stopped moving, so I'm assuming there should be a boss somewhere around here. Oh hey, a Shredder hologram. He essentially goes, hi, I'm Shredder, and you're going to the past now. Bye bye. So to shorten it up, the Rat King isn't there. They just forgot about the level after it for some reason. And as such, you don't need to fight the Sh Shredder boss and either, so no need to be able to throw enemies in this game. <laughs> Now you're in the prehistoric level and you fight your way through. Also, the raptors that used to run around at certain points, yeah, they, they breathe fire now. Sure, sure, why not? And, and then you reach the boss. Remember that awesome boss they had here, that badass turtle, spikes on his back, had a sword, and beating him is quite a pain because he had a lot more health than the other bosses? Yeah, he's replaced by a blob. A big, fat, muddy blob thing which I also shouldn't recommend with Michelangelo or Raphael, since you will get hit when you touch him and you need to be pretty close and you need to hit him at specific times. Yay. And then comes the boat level. The trap floor tile thingies are pretty much impossible to see at this point, especially when you're hitting an enemy and he's being knocked, by, knocked back by your attacks and you walk forward and you get hit by it and that will happen over and over and that is so awesome and you will run into those a lot also the boat that shoots cannonballs from the background does they, 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 they remove that too the, the pirates didn't really feel like shooting anymore and then you reach the boss and it's the bosses from the technodrome the level they removed yeah so yeah apparently they replaced bebop and rocksteady I actually remember the names this time, with Taka and Razar, who no one liked anyway. Oh yeah, and, and they can pretty much just punch. I actually waited for another attack for a while, I actually let him hit me, but he was basically just punching. He wasn't turning me into an ice cube, he wasn't setting me on fire, he was just running around and punching me. And the only thing that was actually still fun about that boss was when you killed him and he turned into a dog, when you tried to punch him you would still hear the punching noise, but... They changed that too. I'm pretty sure this makes me a bad person, but oh well. Anyway, you get that out of the way, you get to the train. The train is pretty much the best level in the game. It's a shame the boss doesn't throw lobsters anymore and he doesn't fall out of the train when you kill him, but the level itself is pretty cool. The environment is pretty awesome and well, it's pretty well done. And then you get to the space skateboard level, which has the same cluster fuckery as the sewers, only without traps and with helicopter things, and the boss seems to have lost some attacks too. He was really, really easy. And he still sounds like a Muppet. Then comes the space level where pretty much every turtle has gone before. The ice squares are there too. Now in the old game there were these ice squares and they would light up for about a second or a second and a half and you would have time to jump away from them but if you didn't you would turn into an ice cube. Now in this game you get turned into an ice cube the moment they light up. As in, when you touch them you will turn into an ice cube. When you try to jump over them you will turn into an ice cube. Then you reach the boss, the uh, Krang, again, only this time in a UFO, which can apparently squash you in mid-air. And when you kill him, you go to the final level, and he still sounds like a Muppet. Now in the final level, you see the most epic transformation sequence at oh, no, no, wait, it's not there. You then fight Shredder, who, during the first half of his life bar, is just plain evil. He seems to like his super armor, and he basically blocks most of your moves. And then he, when he reaches the second half of his health bar, he gets a new attack, where he jumps in the sky, misses you with his attack, and then you punch him over and over and over and over, and then you win. Then there's the ending, the Statue of Liberty gets placed back to its original place, everyone's happy, la di da the boy in the background jumps around for a while, and you unlock survival mode, where you get to play the entire game on any single difficulty you want, using only one single life for the entire game. Oh, and the points you get are just for leaderboards in this game. You don't get any extra lives, and you... Yeah, you just get them. Hooray! Also, you can double jump. Yes, awesome. You never use that, ever. So, yeah, in short, the game was okay, but it could have been done a lot better. It could have at least included all of the stages, rather than just removing one entirely, and removing several boss fights, and 
putting that blob in there. The combat system is weird, you can't change your controls, and the bosses are also just weird and stupid. Especially that weird blob thing. Crank sounding like a Muppet, and the train stage being the only memorable thing about the entire game. Uh, oh well. The game was okay. This is Garrett, and I'm a whiny bastard. Me. <laughs> bye bye.